Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 12 of my Cataclysm tutorial series. I'm Icon and, well, I wanted to do something different for this episode, but we're going to talk about exploration today. You remember that wonderful little hideout I had there? Well, there, a long way came this dude, hauled me an excrement and told me to leave because this is now his turf. So I felt like let's include that into the series because, you know, it's something you should know about. So survivors can be if it's our 50-50 thing. First off, it's about your social skill. Your social skills are higher. It's going to be a lot easier to make friends out there. But most of the time you want to be really, really careful with these dudes. So the bottom line here is he... he, he He's at le he was at least so friendly not to kill me outright, so we get to run away. But the problem there is, my hideout is gone, and therefore we need to roam, ar roam around and, and find out what where we can live again. And I felt like that's a pretty good occasion to, to show you guys a little bit around in the world of over in the area of uh, overworld expertise. Uh, to share a couple of tricks that I've learned along the way. So first off, and that's probably the most important thing, when something shows up that you're pretty sure you can't kill right now, or it's just scaring the hell out of you and you don't want to face it unprepared, run away. Because this is a permadeath game, you have only one attempt, and if you mess up once, you're gone for good. So it's better to just leave. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roam over to this place, and uh, we're we're going to explore a little bit of the uh, a, a little bit of the map features that I haven't talked about yet. So you can move this uh, grid here with the uh, numpad, and if you hit capital W, you set up a route. If you hit capital W twice, you can put up auto walk. Be careful though with auto walk. It can really mess you up. You should really just um, use it carefully. If you're really angsty, just turn on safe mode with the exclamation mark button. And this way, there will be always an uh, automatic stop before you run into something bad. Okay, so just wanted to check if I was lucky and in this house or at this house I had parked my car once. But while I was too happy, I parked the car in front of the electronics store. I don't want to get around and get, get into this this area again. This guy will most likely have a gun. And since my uh, Kevlar vest is already pretty uh, worn down, we're not really going to do anything here. Okay, so I just noticed one thing down there. There's a zombie. Where's the zombie? There's a zombie. Okay. But there's also, okay, there's lots of uh, baddies down there. They are evil, even ferals. So, okay. I just uh, noticed that there was this uh, ladder here, which means we can't get, no we, we could have gotten on top of that silo, but that's not going to happen anymore. Okay, so the problems we're facing here right now is I'm hungry and thirsty, and I don't really have much on me. So let's munch down a bit of, a bit of the stuff that I got on me. But when you're involuntarily on the road, water is one of the most uh, critical resources. So whenever you can find some fluids, like here, some lemonade, just pick them up and uh, use them for, and uh, bring them for later. Because my experience has shown me that fluids are way harder to to acquire. Food is a lot easier to to scavenge. It's it's literally everywhere. So we're also looking for a lucky coffee maker here. Maybe I get something here, but no, I don't. I'll plunder the duct tape, though. Duct tape never hurts. Do I have a flashlight on me? Yes, I do. Okay, let's keep moving. So, when you want to get along uh, the land, there are a couple of things that you really should care about. First off, Moving on the road is the safest, usually. Moving on uh, across the la land can always impose problems. There's a couple of monsters in the game that can only attack you while you're uh, on the grass. So here I'm running too close to the survivor. 
so some monsters are only happening on the grass so if you if you happen to see a lot of uh, dirt mounds dirt piles on the, on the ground be aware it could be a sign of a friendly nest of uh, trapdoor spiders waiting for you to come by so but we were lucky usually planes by the way are pretty safe i don't want to over exaggerate the risk here planes are probably the safest terrain to uh, travel to, uh, through then come the forests they can really mess you up because you have very very narrow uh, vision range and if you happen to stumble into a bees or wasps nest in the middle of the forest you could be most of you you could be directly dying so that's that's one real big risk about the forest that you should always be aware of you could just stand right in front of something that you can't handle the planes they don't have that problem they they will give you always the fair warning of seeing what comes before you run into it so over here is a radio tower radio towers are just brilliant to to get a site um, on the map easier. So what you've got to know about uh, radio towers, though, is sometimes they are infested with problems. The most common problem that infests radio towers are wasps. So always be aware that these radio towers might offer a nice uh, vantage point, but they might be also quite deadly. This one here, for example, I had to pass because it had too many wasps so or it had wasps in general so let's go upstairs there just hitting the page up button until you are all the way on the top sometimes you find even items on top of the um on top of the radio towers this time we weren't that lucky and voila you see there's a huge uh, new inside about the area there and this this is freaking bad news this is a three on three grid beehive you don't want to get anywhere close to that so everything around like three grids around this is for me a real big danger zone also be wary with swamps you know there are animals in there that you don't really want to meet over there we have a motel motels are really really your best friends when you're on the road and you're capable of whacking a few zeds Motels are really pretty safe to clear as long as you have a couple of antibiotics on you, uh, antiseptics, I'm sorry, because <clears throat> you might want to be able to disinfect your wounds. So in this scenario, I'm going to try and hop over to the next radio tower to get a look-see there. I'm also going to be very interested in that motel here. Motels are, when you're exploring the old world, pretty interesting spots. By the way, you can climb these obstacles by pressing E in front of them and selecting them. Then. Um, motels are pretty cool because you can always uh, find some maps there of, about the area there. So capital W one more time to travel to this point. And uh, luckily there's no problem whatsoever around. Oh, this is another layout of the, of the radio tower. They sometimes come with resources in there. That's really uh, a, a pretty uh, nice find here. You can also use, if you want to, you can also use these if you want to as a uh, as a preliminary base, if you want to say, if you want to see it like that. Because, you know, you have an upstairs here where you can rest. I mean, it's open air, but if you bring a sleeping roll or something like that and warm clothing, you can rest the night there. Or, alternatively, you can also take the risk of sleeping here. But I wouldn't dare to, you know, those windows, they don't have any curtains. When you're on the road, sleeping is really, really dangerous. And you should always take the safest spot that you can't get. So, always take a look, say, around here. You, you most likely find some electronic items in this room. And here, some work-related clothing. Sometimes you get some really, really nice finds, like, for example, a hard hat or safety glasses. If you come across a couple of safety glasses, just pick them up. They have really nice armor stats for your eyes and low encumbrance. There are enemies that just spit nasty stuff at you. And, uh, you know, safety goggles are just way to go. Okay, so we got this, and 
I'm now going to travel over to this place. So capital W again for a fast walk. And we spotted a moose. And he's uh, right in my way. So moose are really bad news. You, you don't really want to run into these dudes. So be very, very careful when you cross one. They are quite aggressive if you get too close to them. But you can safely just uh, cut corners and uh, usually you don't have to worry too much about them. But respect the moose, you know. He's going to slap you pretty hard if you don't. But if you ever have a run in with a moose, just uh, take the firearm of your uh, of your choice and and clip it as hard as you can before before it get cl gets close to you. So there's a giant ladybug, and it's really really close. So it's a little bit greedy of mine, but I'm going to go upstairs first. And here we found a survivor's map and a survivor telescope. Survivor telescopes are pretty much the the drop you're looking for when you scout radio towers. It's pretty easy while you have it on yourself, you have a uh, larger vision radius on the map and combine that with the radio tower and you have some glorious uh, mapping here. I mean, look at that. This is insane compared to what we've seen before. So basically from this radio tower where I'm standing at, I've seen further into this direction than when I was standing on this one. So we should probably recheck the other uh, radio towers if I get out, uh, out of here alive, that is. So we, I see this little township of Greenland there. This, this looks like a really good spot to, um, to set up camp. But for now, we really need to get away of that uh, giant ladybug. So it sounds a little bit ridiculous. The beast that afraid, but you should be afraid. These things are in the early game. I don't want to over exaggerate, but probably the most deadly thing that you can come across commonly. Giant ladybug, my friends. These things are killer machines. They are super fast, very, very well armored, and they deal tremendous amounts of damage. You can also try to use them to kill off zombies, but. Be wary. When you lured zombies into these things, run away. Probably uh, going to be done with those zombies in no time, and you should be not around there. That's also the reason why I'm not getting uh, into the risk of uh, scouting out this. I mean, most likely this thing won't be seeing me, but, you know, there could be a chance of a random roam closer to me, and this would be... My dead. Uh, my death. It's just like that, you know. Oh, there's the moose again. But it's northeast of me, so we can't just uh, proceed with the auto explore. But, oh yeah, I also found the survivor's map. Small A to activate it. And um, you are going to have a lot of roads. Maps, when you find them, just activate them once. And then you can either drop them or disassemble them for a few pieces of paper. I usually like to disassemble them. Okay, so let's go downstairs again. And uh, yeah, we are expanding our vision here by a lot. So there's a motel. And there's a hunting lodge and a rural house. Okay. There's an LMOE shelter. So LMOE shelters are, well... I had to ask my uh, Twitch audience about what that abbreviation is standing for. In case you are wondering, it's Last Man on Earth. And these things are underground shelters that always provide everything you need to stay alive for pretty much an indefinite amount of time. But, okay. In this scenario, it's not an indefinite amount of time, but it's basically a really, really safe underground base. But there is one thing, a catch, if you might want to say so. A few of the designs that have been made by the content creators of this game include very, very deadly layouts with traps, monsters, and whatnot. Some of them are also really safe, but if you are going for these, always uh, always be ready for, a, for an adventure. So I also now spotted the town of Menden. Look at this beautiful little thing. There's even a science lab right next there. Okay. 
So there's also a little bit of a farming spot with the silos and this this spot here. So exploration wise, this looks now like the most interesting uh, area to to go to. So you can also use capital Z and uh, small uh, Z to to change the zoom. And now I see two roads I could go towards to. So either cross the bridge towards Greenland and get in there. But I don't want to go there. There's a small and simple reason to that. Quite often the bridgeheads are guarded by autonomous guns or there's just a sand sack, sandbag barrier with baddies around there. Basically crossing a bridge is always something you should be wary of and never cross it with a vehicle. Don't do that. You might be just running straight straight into a minefield. Literally. <laughs> so bridges are really something you should you should take them with care. They're not really deadly, but they are might there are they are quite often the, the ending spots of those are a little bit uh, more adventurous. So we're going to travel over to this spot here, probably clear out the motel. Motels can can be a really good um, refuge as well, but I'm first off heading for the silos, and then we're going to try and uh, check out the vicinity of Menden. So I'm following here, by the way, a little bit of a strategy that I didn't uh, speak out um, loudly about yet. But my approach here is I try to scout out everything in the vicinity which is safe first. Like, check out those radio towers. They, they, are, the high, they are the sweetest spots. Then aiming for silos for more vision. Then aiming for the next safe spot to acquire resources. Probably would be this rural house and the hunting lodge. Then aim for, well either a small township like Menden, or try to clear out a different uh, type of hideout. And this is basically a pretty much my go-to strategy, which I'm very, very successful with in most cases. But sometimes you really have to travel abroad a lot. And here again, let me re repeat the, the golden rule of roguelikes. If there is something that you can't uh, deal with, just run away. Like, for example, here is the worst case scenario. I ran right into a wasp's nest. There. Auto walk. If you see paper walls, just run. So we're now going to use the uh, menu here. Uh, I don't know what this uh, key is uh, here. Movement mode menu. I don't know what it's called in English. So we're going to run away now because you know there's uh, we're, we're we're literally swarmed by wasps and uh, oh there's even a wasp queen yeah so now press the button again and walk again so luckily they didn't go aggro on me okay so let's uh, let's calm down again but this also means that this spot is super dangerous so. To not stress out your memory too much, let's make a note. I don't know if I explained that before in a different video. If so, please forgive me. I sometimes forget what I've explained before, but we're going to press capital N now to create a note. You just uh, hover over the grid where you want to put up a note, and here capital N for note. So here, this is all a little bit uh, complicated. If you, if you don't want to configure a lot, just spell out wasp, and then you have a little bit of a note here that uh, tells you what it is when you hover across it. If you want to make it a little bit more fun, you can also change the color of the glyph by... No, you can change the glyph by, for example, here I'm pressing now capital W and this to change it into a W. Or you can also... I don't know, does it actually work like that? No, you can't do both, actually. No. Or you do like that. Here, I replace that with a capital R and replace that with a semicolon. And it'll turn this into a uh, red note. There are surely other methods of editing this, but I personally love 
the color editing a lot. So here you see the keys, keystrokes you need to go for the color editing. And if you're using semicolon, you can't change the color or yeah, you get the idea. Oh, here, there's actually the example of how to uh, put up a, a different glyph with a different color. So, but I guess you get the idea. What uh, the uh, TLDR there actually is, use notes. Notes save lives. And, you know, you will be forgetting this. If you are playing the this run on your own computer and you are, you know, logging in for the fifth, uh, fifth or sixth time, you will forget about that. And next time, maybe the wasps will standing right in your face and you don't get a free pass again. That's why I can't stress it out enough. Use notes. It's really that good. Okay. So we're going to head over to this uh, rural house there. So there's a moose. So we're canceling auto move and um, turning on manual movement. Okay. Pitbull mix. So usually all animals that are no monsters are quite harmless as long as you don't cross their way. There's only a couple of animals, but they they come pretty naturally to you like predators or some where you should steer clear. Or I think you don't need to, an explanation to steer clear from a bear, for example. A special... Um, a special mention a uh, special uh, whatever few words about pigs if you ever encounter a wild boar they are really really bad news they are very very territorial and they'll immediately attack you get away from them they're probably one among the most aggressive critters that you can meet out there in the open so my dude is very thirsty let's sip in a bit of a bit of lemonade but the best uh, thirst quencher out there is always water. And this house was totally uh, barren. There was no resource there. There's no upper floor. It's surrounded by forests and swamp. It's a bad hideout. It's a real false friend. Don't fall for it. The interesting thing here is now the hunting lodge. Hunting lodges can be really, really massive. Because they have that wonderful combination of zombies. Okay. That's not what I wanted to talk about, but yeah. Like many outside locations, every outside location you find, expect it to be zombie-ridden. I haven't uh, spoken about it yet, but wherever you go, every rural house, everything, it can be zombie-ridden and it should be taken with care. So expect fighting wherever you go. Here I'm just uh, abusing the terrain again. Because you can't just uh, take care of these quite easily this way. So the hunting lodge is most likely going to be exactly what we need to have a uh, hideout here, you see. There's a second floor on the hunting lodges. They pretty much always come with a second floor as far as I'm... Uh, as far as I know. And therefore it would be a good... Um, it would be a good hideout, especially because there's a pretty decent chance of fighting, of finding firearms in here, because, you know, it's a hunting lodge. So this is one really, really good hideout when you're looking out for a hideout in, in, the, uh, in the nature. We're probably going to use this for the remainder of the tutorial series, because this is... It's just uh, as good as it gets. So this room here is where the firearms are at. We're going to explore the wonderful world of lockpicking in this, uh, with this little house. And there's even a basement. So we're turning off a flashlight, capital X, page down to peek downstairs. So this could be everything. Let sleeping dogs lie. The uh, downstairs won't be um, interacting with you if you don't interact with it. Let's get upstairs. But before I do so, I'll drop my axe to be more efficient in combat. Alright, because I don't know what's going to be upstairs here, but luckily it looks like it's just a big, big massive chill-out zone. Okay, so while this exploration tour today was very, very specific, a lot of the things I was talking about you can apply on pretty much every run. Especially the prioritization of radio towers and 
always trying to check out the safest spots first. So I want to summarize a couple of things before I end this episode. So really the safest spots that I've found so far in the game are these rural houses. Rural houses are usually really zombie free, but they also tend to be resource free and they 90% of the time they don't have any um, more interesting resources. So they might be a hideout, but if they are surrounded like that, they are more a danger than anything else because, you know, the forest can attract enemies and there's a swamp right next door. This is not really good. Then if you are looking for easy locations to clear, motels are your best friends because they are also featuring pretty much always a drop of a local road map or something like that, which helps you to find other townships in the area. Evac shelters are pretty much always a safe thing. Farmhouses are, or entire farms, are pretty much jackpot in, in terms of long-term safety, because farm fields are where you get your food from after the first year, and farmhouses often come with a second story, so pretty good thing, but they also tend to be filled with enemies, so farmhouses are not that risk-free. Silos are really good. They are the small brothers of the radio tower. You can use them as a vantage point as, ve as well. And beyond that, there's a couple of other things. Like tree farms are, well, they are safe, but there's not much to get from there. And, well, everything else, like uh, here, FEMA camp, literal uh, zombie nests, light industry filled with zombies, intermediate difficulty can clear them out quite decently and beyond that well everything which is uh which is pointing at mutated animals is a big stay away from here um, mark if you ever run into fungaloids make a big um make a big avoidance circle around that too because even if you run the no fungal growth mod they will still annoy the hell out of you while you're exploring there okay so it looks like we have finally found our second uh, or, or our second hideout a real hunting lodge just for uh, for ourselves i'm going to show you the the goodies here so you can also here find here if, no that's a book about shotguns so you can break, smash those uh, windows to, to look in. Just look like there's a lot of guns in there. But yeah, there's valuables of the of the hunting lodge here. Oh, there's a wood axe. That's the latest, a very, very decent weapon. But yeah, more about that in the next episode. And I hope that was helpful for you. Drop me your comments down below. Leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed. And of course, consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And have a good time. Bye-bye.